This was the shepherd's voice that the people heard of their day. Can't get a real good picture of that, but there's some interesting looking fellows. Real happy, aren't they? They were the religious leaders, the Pharisees. They were supposed to be pointing people to God, not pointing people to the back door of the church or, or, or getting rid of the faithful folk. Because that was just the natural man, that's people. Their pride, their envy, their control for power, their blindness within themselves, they don't know. And God forbid that we would be uh, aligned with that. May we grow in grace, may we continue in the truths of the word of God, may we understand God, teach me how long you've been a Christian. Uh, not talking about being a Christian, uh, it's in the Lord, teach me. Keep me teachable. There's things I need to know. Lord, let me not hinder your work. Let me be wise in what, I'm, what we're doing. Stop sometimes. You know, we won't talk about this, but sometimes the very judgment in itself is blindness within a person's heart. Some people have perception and understanding, not because they're different, but the situation, the very blindness, brother, you don't realise you're, you're starting to get a cataract spiritually over. You need an operation. God forbid we would get in that situation. Jesus used this parable in verse 6 to explain, to bring it in a proper and balanced perspective and to correctly rebuke them of the practice of those who were the leaders of the temple. They were the worshippers of God. Verse 6, it says there, <clears throat> they understood not. Why? Because it was blindness to them. They <clears throat> were spiritually blind. Not so much in regards of their physical practices that man had. He had blindness of sight. But for them, <clears throat> it was, I don't see it. And may we be people, as we continue on in the Christian life, be cautious that we don't end up with, we will have our blind spots. We need to be in a church where we're hearing uh, the scriptures, where we're having good friends to be able to share some things. That we need that love. We need that uh, people to help us in that regard. Jesus uses this discourse, this parable, <clears throat> to reach to them. He's still reaching out even though they're against him. It's interesting, isn't it? Some folks may be against you. Keep reaching out to them. Keep loving them as Jesus did. <clears throat> to their spiritual condition, their blindness. They need to know him and the Father's will and the desire for them. In John 9, 41, it says, Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind... You should have no sin, but now ye, now ye say, we see, therefore your sin remaineth. What a judgment. <clears throat> and John chapter 10 and verse 1 starts off with there, verily, verily, or of a truth, this is a solemn truth. And for those people, and you don't have to do this, but for some of the people, if you're not sure, those visiting in the congregation, why someone might get excited and, and say, amen, or, or get really excited, they might even get a little hallelujah or that's because they're saying I agree with that yeah. this, this, is, this is true and so Jesus is appealing to them in that spirit he's saying to them guys verily verily this is truth this is a solemn truth <coughs> so Christ spoke in three metaphors or a simile which word pictures to them that they would probably understand the first one he spoke in verse 1 he spoke about the sheepfold he also spoke about, in regards of the shepherd, verse 2, and verse 3, the sheep. Ah, thank you very much. Good to know. So, yep, there you go. So we see here that he spoke to them as far as the sheepfold, which refers here to the Jewish religion, Judaism, and the religious people of the day. He was focusing mainly on the nation of Israel <clears throat> and in regards that they were to be the light to the other nations. They were God's chosen people. We also see that he was talking to them not just as the sheepfold as far as the uh, Jewish religion, but the shepherd of the sheep. And we showed that picture previously of those who were the religious leaders the Pharisees, the scribes and the prophets, as in Ezekiel 34, but also the civil leavers, and sometimes we see with some of the kings of David, they took that role on a responsibility, or if you will, the custodians or ambassadors. We also see that he spoke to the people of Israel, God's chosen people as far as the nation, and in Isaiah 40, verse 11 up there, we have the scripture that he directly speaks to them, 
uh, saying God's working in their midst. Jesus then, as he normally would do, he uses a common thing to the people to relate to them. And may I just say, folks, it's good to know theology, but it's important to know how it works. It's good to know certain terminology, but it's important to break it down that people may understand. There is no points for talking to someone about certain Hebrew and Greek and those things if they just don't, if you don't live in their world. We need to be in the world, but not of the world. We need to be able to relate to people. And Jesus used the common thing. <coughs> he spoke about sheep, which is very common, and shepherds. He also, through this passage, says, I am the door. Uh, funnily enough, and I thank uh, Pastor Andrew for the liberty, he said, I am the bread. And he said, I am the light, I am the vine, I am the living water. He uses the common to explain, or in that regard, to expound the need of complex issues of life. And it's amazing how God can use the simplicity to the learned to bring right back a simple truth that will bring them out of a complex issue. More importantly, the spiritual truths to the natural, to the common man. It was a common practice of that day in Palestine for a number of shepherds to use one sheepfold or for a shepherd to put his sheep in a holding pen or the sheepfold. That was common to them. And so we have up here... <coughs> graphics are good sometimes to get us an understanding. I mean, I was brought up in Unley. Uh, anyone know about sheep folds, you know? Anyone know about country stuff? Not much, but I seem to know people, God keeps putting me with country folks, so I have better understanding. And so here we see that this would have just probably been a bit of a common uh, sheep fold. So sometimes the shepherds would be on their journey, and uh, it's interesting just, we've got to go back a little bit, it's interesting in regards of if anybody's been up to Harndorf and you'll see certain plaques up there and they'll talk about the Lutheran folk there and their veggie gardens and the ladies would spend uh, quite a lot of time bringing their produce. It wasn't Woolies fresh, you know, that picked off whatever it is, two hours or four hours. They had to walk down with that and bring it to market. And so things worked, believe it or not, just a little bit slower. It wasn't as instant. And so as they're on their journey with the shepherds, and the sheep, what they would do is they'd, <clears throat> they'd have a rest for the sheep and uh, so they would uh, have a rest for themselves. And so they would have these sheep folds, <clears throat> putting their um, sheep in there and resting, resting on their time on the journey. Or they might just move to another pasture so they'd be moving over where there might be some feeding ground or some water. But more importantly, during the night time or those times when the shepherd can't see everything with his protection from the predators. Now, I've got a cup up here. And there were some of the animals, such as the foxes. It was quite interesting. I saw a few of those last night on the way home. And uh, we live up near the uh, Happy Valley Reservoir. And uh, so here are some different pens or sheepfolds. And we see there that it just has the one door, which is quite interesting. Um, there's one for the kids. There's the fox coming around the corner. And there's another illustration, whereby it was usually something of a circular, about 10 feet or about 3 metres of single opening, and, that, and, and the shepherd would be served as a door. It was commonly made of stone, but some were also wood. And it's interesting that when you see the height of those, that the sheep couldn't see out. Now, here's a little thing that's interesting. <clears throat> that's not only protection in regards of uh, from the sheep within, but, you know, it's good sometimes that God doesn't reveal to us everything that we can see. Sometimes he hides some things for our benefit. And let's think about this for a moment. How many people could have said, I come to know Jesus at such and such a date, and could you imagine just the first two years or five years of your journey? It would be like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work. I don't know whether I'll receive Jesus. But he patiently works with us. What am I saying? Sometimes God is working his purposes, even though we may... We may have desires those things, to let God show us what he wants at specific times. And you know what? I'll throw this one in. Whether it be spiritual children in regards of uh, um, new in the faith or children, parents, you don't have to expose your children to lots of things. They do need that protection. And I think that the, the little I know, uh, being in the younger bracket, the older bracket's over here, but the situation being is that things have got worse. 
sometimes dad and mum will say, no, you can't see that. No, you're not watching that. No, you don't have to be involved in this conversation. It doesn't mean they don't love you. It just means that they're being a good shepherd. Yeah. It's a good thing, parents, sometimes to use that word and just say, no, and lead them. We'll stay back to the notes. <laughs> but it's important that God gives us that protection as well. There was only one entrance in and out. And that was via the shepherd or the porter, a hired labourer in regards or a hireling, the shepherd. Here's a little bit of trivia for you. You know, the back door was a European invention. It was not something that they would understand. Uh, we have multiple doors probably through here. So it was just in through that way. Jesus now comes to them and he clarifies to the Pharisees and the custodians of the day. He says to them of the religious faith, he says to them, I am the door. I am the door of the sheep, verses 7 and 9. He repeats this, and he's saying to them in that regard that the only way in and out is through me. That was a very bold statement because the high priest was standing there going, I don't think so, and he's going, it doesn't matter what you think, I know. And people today may say, the only way to God is through this church or through this means. I don't think so. They think, you have to do it that way. Well, I know so. It doesn't matter how much money you've got. It doesn't matter on elaborate things. We're live streaming this, aren't we? Anyway, it's interesting because my mum's been going to some churches. And I don't think she'll ever. She's not a Christian. But the thing is, she said, we brought to a couple of, she said, and each we go to some church, she goes, and she looks at She said, this one must be a poor parish. She's Catholic back there. And I said, why does that come? Well, this one doesn't have their own building. And probably coming, and you know, people think because they have extras that it's more of a church. Praise God, the church is the sheep, it's the people. So, the situation being that he not only authenticates that he's saying, I am the door, he continues on and clarifies his role as the shepherd. Uh, Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36, he refers to himself as the good shepherd. And also, we see that he refers to himself in John 10 here as the shepherd. And Hebrews 13, 20, he says he's not just the good shepherd, he's the great shepherd. And 1 Peter chapter 5, and verse 14, he is the chief shepherd. So to qualify things here this morning, who's in charge? The Lord Jesus. Who is the one who should be preeminent? The Lord Jesus. He is the door. He is our shepherd. God has given under shepherds to help and to guide as well. The Pharisees didn't hear the shepherd's voice. It does amaze me, but it's a spiritual work, <clears throat> that there are people I know who have sat in church, and I don't know people here this morning, but who have sat in church and can hear the scriptures and can go to Sunday school, and you have good Sunday school teachers here, I know them, they're good, and you have the gospel, program, and often I ask people in church, I said, what did you learn in Sunday school? And it's interesting, various answers. But even those within the congregation. And those who are brought up with church, all of a sudden, they couldn't hear the shepherd's voice. Now, this morning, you're probably at this time, uh, you're probably looking at your watch going, I hope this guy's finishing soon. I'm not, getting, <laughs> I'm not really getting this. Well, it might be, don't worry about me, maybe you're not hearing the shepherd's voice. Maybe you're following, so it's, not, it's not connecting, you know. <clears throat> and um, he shows here, <clears throat> in, uh, as we said before, Chapter 10, verses 1 to 6, the parable as far as the sheepfold, the shepherd and the sheep. Verses 7 to 8, there's the application of the parable. And then in uh, verses 7 and 10, he talks about the door of the shepherd. And we talked a bit about that as far as the authenticity or he's the authentic door. And look, people have given up on the religious leaders. That's where the climate was. They've kind of given up. And sometimes you come across people and go, well, you know, I, I kind of just give up. And we're talking, say, probably in a non-Christian setting. And sometimes even I, I kind of give up on that. You know, the shepherd is Jesus, and that's who we need to be focusing upon. And also for others, the door of the sheep, salvation is only through Jesus. What, what, what blocks sometimes that entrance? <clears throat> well, we have a, I think we've got a slide here somewhere about that. There they are again, the happy bunch. But there's many things. You may not be able to read that. Jesus is the only way to the Father. You cannot get to heaven any other way but through the Lord Jesus Christ. He came, as we have celebrated as a baby, he came as man, who is God, and he died on the cross for my sin and for your sin. And you say, well, 
I don't sin. Well, if you've lied and if you've cheated on your tax return or other things, you have, you have done wrong. But you have disobeyed God's law. It's not man's law. And other people will try other ways. They will try to be traditional in their, their religious observance. They, they will try other ways of doing good deeds. They're not bad things, but they will not get you to heaven. And here we see that the Pharisees, this is a bit of a comical, they are trying many other means and ways to get to heaven, to God, but it's not acceptable because it's only by faith. In Jesus alone. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves. There's, there's nothing that you can do to please God. There is nothing that you can bring and say, God, this is my worth. There's an Old Testament story about Cain and Abel. Worked hard, brought him, but God was not accepted in that. And so this morning, <laughs> the situation is, is that have you come through the door or are you trying to come through another way? As he's describing here to the religious people. And then we see something very interesting. <clears throat> Verses 11 to 18 to the Good Shepherd. And then 19 to 21, we see the reaction of the Pharisees to Jesus. And, you know, this is just something I'm going to park a little bit. Believers, we have to be careful sometimes of how evil is reacting sometimes to various other things. We have to take stock and say, is this the fruit of the Spirit? Is this is what God would have? But I'll mask it. I'll customise it. Their reaction of just about in regards, um, I haven't wrote anything down, but they were just became uh, angry at him. And it's interesting, why, why would you get angry? Why is it sometimes you might uh, be sharing the gospel with somebody not being contentious, but you're sharing, and all of a sudden they go, oh, how dare you? Oh. Be wise. Sometimes there's a spiritual work happening. And we have to be alert of those things. And then Jesus, in verses 20, 22 to 42, shows his identity as the Son of God. He just pans it out for them. So we've looked at regards of John chapter 10. And now we're going to be looking at some application in our life. For what does this mean as far as the shepherd's voice? <clears throat> well, the important thing, it does matter who is leading us. Someone is leading you. Mark it down. Um, a lot of people may come along to a church, but they have other preachers. And uh, no, one person says, oh, I had four messages this morning. Well, God bless you, there's more required. But where is your heart according to God? Are you following men? Are you following God? Are you following the word? Or are you putting your trust in those people? I appreciate that not everybody has gift of teaching or those areas to expand the scriptures, but where is your trust being placed in? This is very important as far as Jesus being the shepherd and hearing his voice. The shepherd's voice, first of all, I think that we can make application is comforting. It's interesting that as, as you hear the scriptures, as you hear the words of Jesus, as you hear the gospel message that Jesus Christ came and he, and he came as part to uh, forgive you of your sin. Your first steps, if it will, if I could make that parallel, the first steps of, you know, obviously, um, you know, mum having birth and, and the child coming up and, you know, the relationship of mum and chi a child and then obviously of parents in that regard, those first words, <coughs> ah, it's comforting. It's interesting now, I'm no psychologist, but I think you'd know that um, that's why it's not a bad idea if ever you have a nursery or creche, have it away because the mum sitting here will know their child. But the interesting thing, when mum walks in or whatever, it's like the children are like, that's my mum or dad. And they focus, and so too, the shepherd's voice should be comforting to us in our first steps of those places of origin, first words. David was a shepherd boy. I'm sure he would have at times had talked to the sheep and there was no company or no mobile phones, no texting. Unbelievable, isn't it? But it worked. And the uh, situation being, he would sing and he'd have conversation or prayer with God, he'd walk with God. And so too, mums and dads, that our children should understand the shepherd's voice is comforting in our home. In family, those way be the way. You know, often uh, everyone's done this. They've been in the shopping centre and all of a sudden mum's doing shopping and she says, kids, you know, I've got this much time or whatever. And they're going down, they go past the lolly aisle or the toy aisle. What happens? The children are just, I want that one. <laughs> Actually, they get bigger now, don't they? Obviously, we just don't have two milks now. We have a whole aisle of milks. And obviously lollies have expanded, let alone the cereal boxes. But the situation being the kids just get, oh, I want... And all of a sudden, before long, and people have... Uh, and you hear the children going, Mom! You know, sometimes you're wandering, you think, there's a lost child. And all of a sudden, and to hear their parents' voice, you know, 
Jonathan Mark, come here right now. It's funny how the second name always gets done when you're in trouble. <laughs> but that comfort of my mum's here, there's that protection of defence, that care. And knowing as the shepherd is comforting for us as believers. Also, the shepherd's voice is comforting in regards of the provisions, the way that he, and we read in Psalm 23, the way he feeds us. And, you know, something that's probably even better than that is the way he knows us. That's scary for us to ponder that, that we know ourselves, but he knows us more so. And it's comforting to know that he still accepts me. When I've been unfaithful, when I have uh, not followed, it's comforting. He loves you. You're his. There's that connection. The shepherd's voice is comforting. The shepherd is committed to those sheep for his livelihood. He's committed in regards to their well-being or survival. Now, I'm not saying that about God. God exists without us, but he's included us. He says, I've got a relationship I want to share with you. This is I want to draw you closer. It's us who sometimes push away or sit and break that relationship and that fellowship with him. And we think of that in regards of with Moses' parents. Could you imagine that Moses, as God is working his life, he's doing this big thing of going to make him a leader and save the people, it's God's plan. And and yet, I think that when the mother came and the parents came, there was just that mum and dad. It didn't matter how big he was. There was that comforting thing of knowing that the shepherd's voice, it's my mum and dad. And same with our Heavenly Father. Also, we see the shepherd's voice is comforting But the shepherd's voice... Whoops, we've gone the wrong way there. It's clear. It's clear in regards of uh, the Pharisees. The people weren't listening. They rejected him, the legalists, the burdens they were putting on people. But as we mentioned there before, the shepherd's voice is personal in regards... It's very clear in regards of the connection with you. And also the communication. They know... I mean, I don't know where this is happening to you, but... Sometimes I've got to, I mean, like I said, I had my son Joshua down, and I said, Joshua, disengage in Sydney, come back to me here in Adelaide. And so he'll talk in Sydney terms, or he'll you know, talk in the... And I'll say to him, Josh, just... And so sometimes when you're talking to people, they're localised. You're finding that more and more? And so it's not clear what they're talking about. Ask people for directions. Well, if you go down there, that's the BP I buy my bread at, and then you turn left. I don't know where you're going. But the shepherds... The shepherd's voice is clear to us in regards of he's connecting with us. He's also leading his sheep. He leads by example. Jesus gives a demonstration here in the scriptures and shepherds lead by example. He edifies. He edifies so that people can be equipped. He doesn't try to stifle things so that he can be the leader. He commits things and trusts others. He gives direction. The shepherd's voice is clear in clear direction for us and guides us. <clears throat> Some of this has already been covered before. As, uh, as, um, as leaders and as parents, we need to give clear boundaries and be consistent. We have to be careful for our children to give them a clear boundary of yes or no. no? Well, I'll leave it up to them. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Uh, or maybe just wait on that. And that's how our Heavenly Father sometimes communicates to us. Sometimes he's clear. I know there's been experiences in my life where the situation has been... Where God has said no, and I said, I don't really accept that. I don't want that. But knowing that he is working all things together for good. He is knowing what is best for us as the sheep and the timing of those things. Be careful, parents. Don't just be their friend. Be their shepherd. Guide them and lead them. Guide them and lead them. Help them as time goes on to make some choices. Help them to work through those things. The shepherd's voice is clear. And the shepherd's voice is also, the last point, is confronting. And uh, I think we've got that. uh, John chapter 10, verse 27, it says there, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So how can we hear the shepherd's voice? How can we know his comfort? How can we know his clear direction? How can we know in regards of, why would you say confronting? Well, I don't know about you, but whenever I came to a church where the Bible was open and spoke, I found it confronting. It was challenging me and challenging my direction of things. 
and what I, my ideology or my opinion or my, my thoughts on matters. And so we should be looking at the scriptures where God can change our thinking and we can accept his understanding on these matters. How, does, how can we hear the shepherd's voice? Well, by reading consistently the scriptures. Don't take your Bible, someone not long ago, and just open up and say, I'll read this, I'll read this chapter. Have a consistent reading. Have a, con a consistent time of devotional time in reading through the scriptures coming on Sunday. It's not that the pastor or the preacher has the, um, you know, those lucky numbers for you, but he's proclaiming, and you should be listening, God, prior to coming, you should say, God, what is it you're teaching me today? What do I need to know? Don't bring one bucket, bring two buckets. Have your hearts prepared and say, God, I'm, I'm willing. This day, God, what is it I need? I I'm not really sure what's going to happen in my day. Uh, you don't know what happens in your day, do you? No. And it could be quite not good. But the thing is, is you say, God, I'm not sure, so what do I need for today? What instruction do I have to have in understanding in through Scripture? The shepherd's voice is comforting and confronting as he speaks through prayer to us as we come to him and let our requests be known and be silent to him. I would say that the shepherd's voice can be confronting and I'll put this in a minor category sometimes through books that we read or even letters people give, or even through uh, hymns or music God can work in those situations of speaking to us and letting us know of some things mainly that's not he's reading false in the time but I just say that it's interesting because I, I, can, I can be thankful that today someone may be at the service and they might say I didn't get a lot from of fellowship yeah. of being together it's not about uh, here it's here but it's also God working through you uh, and that's why you might be here and say well I don't preach many messages you might be surprised you know there are some people who just say a, a little but communicate a lot and I wish I was one of those people <laughs> so in conclusion do you hear the shepherd's voice. Do you know Jesus? Do you know him as your personal saviour? Has there been that time in your life where you've made that decision that I'm going my own way and I need to repent of my way doing 180 degrees according to what the scripture have said, not according to what uh, Ron Hubbard or other uh, false shepherds have, but according to what the Bible says that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and life. Do you know him? Have you heard the shepherd's voice? Do you know you're going to heaven? Do you know that for sure? Or is this just something that you're not too sure about? Who do you follow? Who do you obey? And let me ask you this question. Are you continuing to love him? Are you continuing in that relationship with him? As a sheep and shepherd, that mutual in and out. He not only hasn't come in, they go out and they come in. Is that, li that liberty of love and respect? You know, sometimes <clears throat> it's a little bit like in this day and age of tuning in, not that many people got the old radios. Remember that? You'd have to get it on the station. Today it's nothing. But it was, you know, you get a really crackled noise. And I think this year in 2017, may God lead us and guide us, but may we be attentive as the sheep to be guided by Him and be listening and saying, What is it God is speaking to me personally? Jesus, what are you trying to lead my life? It's good to be. But let me say this, folks. Christianity is about you and the Lord Jesus. It's about his word and about you. It's good to get encouragement from other people. But you know what? Sometimes that encouragement just doesn't come. And there's different seasons. And you have to get it from God. You have to get it from the word of God. And so this, Lord, what is it? You, you know what? There's some couples. There's some things happening in church going this way. Which way are you going? What is it God would have for you? You don't have to be... Um, anti anti uh, things but I'm just saying listen to what it is get tuned in have that channel in regards of the right station <clears throat> in the clarity in the clear message as we said before in John chapter 8 and verse 47 the scripture says there 
He that is of God heareth God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. I can just say this to you, that when I first came to a Bible-believing church, it didn't make a lot of sense. But there was a difference there. And I believe the difference that was there was life. It was Jesus who was there. And I believe the difference that was there was the love of the brethren. People had their heart worshipped to God and they had love one for another. And so the situation is that's really in regards of what should be the difference. If, If it's just a methodical, if it's just something of an impersonal thing, you can't hear him because you don't know him. In chapter 10 and verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And for those who are on the journey and sometimes I'm not sure where you're at in your Christian life, but Jesus gives you this definite promise according to the scripture, if you will. He says this as like signed on a contract without no negotiating and I give unto them eternal life. If, if you go your own way, if you continue doing that, you will have to stand, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is that you will have to pay for your sin debt. The Bible says that you will be cast out of God's presence into hell. He doesn't want that. He has no desire. He, he loves you, and that's why he sent Jesus. And verse 28 says, I give unto them eternal life, that they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. What a great confidence to know that we have a shepherd who protects and provides for us. And this is the sheep. You might say, well, there's lots of sheep there. Is he interested in me? This is not a building. He's absolutely Individually and personally. He goes in and he knows your name. He knows uh, something for us. The amount of hair that's on our head. <laughs> Keep busy now, then. But the thing is, he knows. The shepherd's voice is comforting, it's also clear, and it's confronting.